Today we're taking a look at K-Luke Small Batch Barrel Strength Bourbon. But the real question is, is that like that? You're going to want to stick around for this. Let's do this. Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. So today we're taking a look at, maybe new to you, but trust me, you're gonna wanna get to know this brand. So this is gonna be the K. Luke Small Batch Barrel Strength Bourbon. So this is something semi new to the market within maybe the last year, year and a half. But again, trust me on this. And like I said during the intro, is that like that? So as we get into this, I think you're gonna notice that there's some strong, strong similarities to this. But let's kind of dive into the review, I'll give you some more of the, uh, the nosing, tasting notes, things along those lines. But first, let's kind of talk a little bit about some of the specs on this bourbon. So again, this is the K. Luke Small Batch Barrel Strength Bourbon coming in at 117.7 proof or 58.85% ABV. Uh, the blends on this is going to be a blend of high and low rise from the state of Kentucky and Indiana. It is non-age stated. And the MSRP on this is going to come in at right around $115. So why don't we go ahead and kind of dive into the review. Beautiful, deep, rich kind of copper type of color on that. Move the whiskey around in the glass. Beautiful, beautiful oils on the glass. Hopefully that will translate over to the palate. So let's go ahead and dive into the nose. So immediately I'm hit with these nice burnt brown sugar notes almost like a brown butter. There's something that's very decadent about it right away. Really, really nice toffee notes, even kind of a slight hint of like an orange zest, something along those lines. Also in combination there, there's also a little bit of, I'll say like this cherry pipe tobacco. There's something that has the elements of the tobacco, but again, those heavy kind of cherry fruit notes. Also a little bit of a kind of like a cinnamon roll. There's that nice cinnamon, but yet there's a little bit of a backbone of a, of a pastry note. Again, this is leaning very decadent so far on the nose. Yeah, that sweet rich oak is, is there. I probably have noticed that along the way. However, there are those just underlying or other notes that were there that were more present. But again, definitely some oak on this one for sure. It's not over oaked. It's definitely not that, but it's a little bit more of that slight kind of maybe dusty or, or that Rick House uh, type of note that you get on a kind of a really nice uh, barrel. Like if you've ever somehow uh, smelled the dumping of a barrel or been inside of a Rick House, you get that really intense kind of oak or Rick House effect on that. Maybe some slight kind of buttery notes. Yeah, the, the, the nose on this is kind of again, leaning that decadent. There's still some lingering spice that's there as well. That's maybe coming from some of the oak, but again, it's very balanced. It's very, it's very bold. I'll say that so far on the nose. More importantly, let's see how this one's going to taste. And let's see if, like I said during the intro, if this is going to be similar to our buddy George T. Stagg. Cheers. Wow. So, Right off the bat, really heavy, rich toffee notes. That's really kind of leading uh, right out of the gate is again, like I said, those heavy, heavy, uh, rich toffee notes. Quickly followed again by, again, here comes some more of that cherry pipe tobacco. Again, you've got that nice kind of combo of, of picking up on both that kind of tobacco and that cherry note are really working well together so far with that little bit of a that toffee note that was there. Now, what I will say about this is I wasn't picking up as heavy a spice on the nose as I am the palate. There is some really nice lingering spice. So as you swallow that spice, that rye that's there is really kind of starting to, I don't want to say take over, but it's adding to the layers of sweetness that's already on this bourbon. Really nice mouthfeel fairly oily on the palate as well. So that's all lending itself to it wanting to be just that quality type of bourbon that you're looking for. More again of that nice, rich kind of brown sugar, 
molasses maybe there, some nice chocolate notes. This is more of a rich kind of dark chocolate than it is like a milk chocolate. There's just something that's big and bold about this. And again, at a little over 117 proof, I would say it's drinking right on right on its proof point. So, you know, for for a bourbon like this and how this is drinking and the layers of this, absolutely incredible. And again, the similarities to me to like a George T. Stag or maybe even like a King of Kentucky are definitely there. So, you know, you don't want to ever get into kind of trying to compare, you know, these necessarily apples to apples. But again, I'll say there are some really strong characteristics of both this and what it is that a George T. Stag or a King of Kentucky, something like that really has to offer. There is still that lingering kind of cinnamon, maybe nutmegs come kind of combined with that pastry. So it's a little bit more of like a cinnamon roll, but just with that, that really nice beefy, heavy bourbon backbone, there's just this combination of everything that's put together that makes this a really, an extremely well-balanced bourbon. And one that I think as you kind of get into this and maybe take your time throughout the evening sipping on this, I think you'll really start to see the impact of, of what this has to offer and maybe truly how special of a, of a bourbon this really is. You know, Jonathan and his wife that have kind of worked on these blends have done a, an absolutely incredible job. So it's something to be very proud of in terms of what it is they're doing with, with this brand so far. Like I was mentioning on the nose, that kind of fresh dumped barrel, maybe Rick House, there's something about that that just continues to resonate. There are just that richness, that complexity, everything that a bourbon lover truly loves in a bourbon, I think is really in this blend that they've put together. So if this is something that you can find or order online, kind of keep an eye out. I know they're not in terms of distribution out there in, in all the stores and everything, but if you seek them out or check, check things out online, I think you'll start to kind of run into some of their batches. They're, they're blending fairly small uh, batches in terms of the amount of barrels. I believe it was like a four barrel blend. So again, we're talking about very craft niche in terms of them creating something that is on profile to what it is they're trying to give to us. And with this so far being their batch number four, I think it's an absolutely incredible sipping bourbon. Beautiful orange, orange zest that, that kind of is starting to linger a little bit. Continuously all the way through, great spice. You know, you've got that cinnamon, nutmeg, that rye spice that's really kind of kicking in, the barrel influence, maybe a slight char kind of note to it. Again, those sweet kind of buttery notes. Decadent is kind of what kind of comes to mind with that, but not so sweet that this is going to be something that people don't necessarily appreciate who don't want it to always be super sweet. There are the underlying sweet notes, but the richness, the complexity, it's kind of something that like doing barrel picks that I kind of tend to lean towards is this is the profile that really works well for me and becomes something that I really enjoy kind of sipping on. So if that helps you a little bit, uh, I know with everybody who kind of uh, follows and watches and listens and, and all of that. Um, I, I would say kind of take my lead on this and, and trust me on this. I think this is a really fantastic bourbon and one that a lot of you are going to really truly appreciate. Again, this is in reference to their most recent batch, batch four, which has just been released uh, within the last maybe couple weeks as of the recording of this. So there you have it, guys. So again, this is the K-Luke Small Batch Barrel Strength Bourbon, again, coming in at 117.7 proof. And my recommendation would be, if this is something you can find or are willing to search it out online, definitely give this one a try. Again, I think at that $115 price point, for what it is you're getting, you know, I don't wanna say it's a, an incredible value because it's still a little bit on the pricier side, but for what it is you're getting and the overall flavor profile, I think this is hands down a really fantastic bourbon and something that K. Luke 
uh, Jonathan and his wife should be very happy about. Again, thank you so much for tuning in today. Greatly appreciate all the support. Uh, if you'd like to follow me, you can on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all of those places at My Bourbon Journey. Uh, if you'd like to help support the channel and become part of the Mash and Journey Whiskey Club, make sure you check out the link in the description below. If this is something that you've also tried other batches, again, leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts. Let others know your thoughts. Uh, all of that information really kind of, you know, helps anyone who's watching the video and others kind of coming back and, and reading the comments. But again, guys, thank you so much. And remember, it's about the journey and not the destination. Cheers.